it so prevalent? Well, there's a number of risks out there for patients who um, are uh, diagnosed with lung cancer. And one of the most common uh, risk factors, excuse me, <clears throat> one of the most common risk factors that everybody's aware of is smoking. Right. But that's not the only risk factor. And we do know that not every smoker comes down with lung cancer. Right. Um, so there's got to be other uh, factors that are involved, and genetics is one of them. We know that there is a genetic leak because we see multiple generations of family members who ultimately get cancer, whether they're smokers or not. Right. There's other risk factors like radon and asbestos exposure, occupational exposure, and we're not aware of all the risk factors. Mm -hmm. um, but we know, we know that smoking is prevalent. We know that we haven't had a huge impact in, in stopping the use of tobacco products in our population and the population of the world. And unfortunately, we're still faced with this um, increasing problem, which is lung cancer. Now, there are two <coughs> main types of lung cancer, doctor, and if you can speak to them, non-small cell lung cancer and small cell lung cancer. Uh, to me, they sound almost the same, but they're actually very different. Correct. And the reason why we break them up into small cell and non-small cell is because they're treated differently. Okay. Usually, small cell is a very aggressive type of cancer that when diagnosed, it's usually in the most advanced of stages in stage three and stage four. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes, those patients can't be managed surgically. Um, and non-small cell cancer tends to be a little bit less uh, aggressive, tends to be diagnosed in an earlier stage where surgery has an impact. Okay. Um, and so that's mainly the reasons why we divide them into those categories is to try to define the treatment path for those individuals. Is the rate of success in treating each of these cancers different? It does differ. It okay. does differ. As I indicated, small cell tends to be a much uh, more aggressive right. treatment or aggressive cancer, and the treatment often involves a systemic type of therapy with palliative radiation. Whereas non small cell, often probably about 60 to 70 percent of them, the patients ultimately require some sort of surgical intervention. Some require a combination of chemotherapy and radiation and surgery, and some are treated primarily systemically with chemotherapy. But it depends on really the stage in which the patient presents at.